Honors after Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson. Yesterday we worked on uh, adding and subtracting rational expressions. I'm just going to give you a little hint. You know, when we have a test, I know you didn't see as many subtraction ones, but that's part of what's going to separate the top students from the kids who just get C's or B's. I'm going. I guarantee you. I'll bet you money that there will be subtraction problems on the test or the quiz or, or whatever the case may be. And those that have mastered it, even without me providing lots and lots of examples of it, will be the ones who get the high, high grades. Okay? You need to be an independent learner in honors. So, I've warned you if you haven't figured that out on your own already. All right. So, let me see here. Today we are going to be working on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. But before we do something like that, I want to consider a problem, say, like 15, <clears throat> excuse me, over 48. And I'm going to multiply that by, say, uh, 32 over 100. Okay? Now, look, I talked to you during OAA week about how you all know how to simplify a fraction that has its... As written vertically, okay, I know all of you could simplify 1548s. Uh, you could all simplify 32 one hundredths, but a lot of you don't ever stop to consider that you can simplify this way and also this way. I can't guarantee that every fraction will simplify, every product will simplify all four ways, but if you do, check, you will make your job so much simpler. I'll give you a real simple example. If I have 1 eighth times uh, 8 fifths, okay, the hard way to do this is to go 1 times 8, and then 8 times 5 is 40, and then go, oh, that simplifies. 8 goes into that, 8 ones goes into 45 times. That is the hard way to do it. Instead, I could simply go, you see these 8s diagonally? They can cancel each other out, turning them both into 1s. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. And there we go. Why is it simpler? Because it's easier to simplify when things are in their factored form as opposed to when they're in their product form. All right. 8 uh, times 5 is 40, no matter any way you look at it. And 8 over 40 simplifies to 1 fifth. But when I'm done, I don't have to simplify because I simplified first. All right, enough preaching about that. Let's come over here and look at these two fractions. And I've told you that the best way to start is not necessarily to start with this arrow or this one or the diagonals. It's the one that you see first. And jumping out at me right away, I don't know why it's jumping out at me, probably because I made it up. I see 16 going into here twice, and I see 16 going into here three times. Okay, 32 48 would simplify to 2 thirds. Now, I can see 3 going into 3 once and going into 15 5 times. All right, so right now I've done this direction and I've also done this one. Well, now I know 5 goes into 100 20 times. That was this direction. And 2 goes into 2 once and goes into 20 10 times. I've checked all four ways. I've simplified all that I could. My numerator ends up being 1 times 1, which is 1. My denominator ends up being 1 times 10, which is 10. And the simplest form of this is 1 tenth. And that's it. All right. So we're going to check all four ways when we do this. All right. Let's look at one more like that. And then we will talk about the rational expression ones. Okay, uh, let's see here. How about 37 over 64 times, uh, let me see here. Let's go with 74 and let's go with 65. Okay, now I don't see anything right off the bat jumping out at me. 
Uh, I'm going to check this way, and I know 37 is prime, so it doesn't have any factors in common with 64. 65 and 74, I'm not finding any. I am finding when I look this way, 37 goes into 37 once. It goes into 74 twice. All right. Now, I can list the factors of 65, kind of do the prime factorization of it, you know. And I've got 5 times 13. 5 is prime. 13 is prime. 5 does not go into 64. 13 definitely does not go into 64. 2 does not go into 65. I am done. I am done. So now I multiply. 1 times 65 is 65. 64 times 2 is 128. And I know it's simplified. I don't have to stop and check this answer. That's another reason I like doing this so much better. 65 128. If you just put 65 128 in front of me, I might not know if it's simplified or not. I'd have to stop and think about it. But because I checked here, when I'm done multiplying, I know that this is as simple as it gets. All right, so let's take a problem like this. Let's go with, hold on one second. Okay, I've got x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 times x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. And the first thing I'm going to do on this, I am going to use the big F word. I am going to factor all over the place. I'm going to factor everything possible, and that will allow me to start canceling. Right now, I cannot cancel these x squared. Some of you are going to want to do that. But you see this, this x squared and the 4? They're connected by subtraction, right? Does division undo subtraction? No, it does not. So therefore, I can't just cross out these x squareds. I'd have to have a situation where the x squared and 4 were being multiplied and the x squared and 5x were being multiplied to allow division to cancel them out. So this will not work. I cannot cancel x squared and x squared. So I factor. My fractions become, my numerator becomes x plus 2 as a quantity times x minus 2 because that top form is the difference of squares. The denominator becomes x plus 2 as a quantity times x plus 3. All right, times the numerator of the second fraction. That's also a difference of squares. x plus 3 as a quantity times x minus 3 as a quantity. And the denominator, perfect square trinomial, x plus 2. And I am going to write it twice instead of writing as a quantity squared. I think it'll make a little more sense to you. All right, now I'm going to check all four ways. One, two, three, four. Now, remember, it doesn't matter um, which one I check first, just so I check all four. Right off the bat, I see I got an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. Why can I cancel them? Because each quantity is being multiplied by another quantity. And division here undoes the multiplication. So, that's good. Now, I'm going to look over here. I don't see anything. You can't cancel the x's because that's addition. That's addition. can't cancel these x's because that's subtraction. That's addition. We need it to be pure multiplication. When I look this way, I almost see something that will cancel, but I already canceled the next plus 2. So I'm going to look this way. Ooh, look at that. I've got a quantity of x plus 3 and another quantity of x plus 3. I will cancel those. One for one. And I have checked all four ways. My new problem becomes the quantity x minus 2, the numerator, times quantity of x minus 3. In the denominator, I'm going to have the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2. I love this answer. I love it. I do have to state some restrictions here, but I love this answer. If you wanted to go ahead and give me this answer, x squared minus 5x plus 6. I got that by foiling. For some of you, it would be a great idea because you don't foil properly. You forget about your outers and inners. And the denominator would be x squared plus 4x plus 4. And I mean, you shouldn't even have to think about it because we went from here to here, right? Well, now there to there is the same thing. All right? This is simplified. I will accept either answer with restrictions. And so the restrictions are 
that x cannot equal negative 2. That's already covered there. Negative 3 right there. And negative 2 is covered. So x cannot be any of those. So a good final answer would be either, oops, didn't want to move the whole thing, would be x minus 3, it's quantity x minus 2 over quantity x plus 2, x plus 2, x does not equal negative 2 or negative 3, or you could have stated it as x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. And x does not equal negative 2, negative 3. Both the green and the red answer get full credit. All right, let's try another one here. Hold on one second. Let me get situated. Okay, take a look at this situation. I've got 5 times 5x five cubed minus 80x over x squared plus 6x plus 9. And I'm dividing that by x squared minus x minus 20 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now, it's division. I know that multiplying by or dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5x cubed. Sorry about that. Let me make that a little prettier. Oops, not in draw mode anymore. I guess cubed minus 80x over x squared plus 6x plus 9. And I'm going to multiply that by the reciprocal of the original fraction. 7x plus 12 and x squared minus x minus 20. All right, now it's time for the big F word. I'm going to factor. And I'm going to look at this first fraction. I know the denominator is a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to say that's x plus 3 as a quantity squared. If you want to, you can write out x plus 3 times x plus 3. The numerator has a common, a GCF. It has a 5 and an x, which will leave me with an x squared minus 16. Right? But x squared minus 16 factors as the quantity of x plus 4 times the quantity of x minus 4. So you see the numerator here is really 5x times x plus 4 times x minus 4. Of course, the x minus 4s are both in quantities. All right, the other fraction, the numerator, I need two factors of 12 that add to be 7. Well, that would be positive 3 and positive 4. The denominator, I need two factors of 20 that subtract to get negative 1. Well, that's positive 4 and a negative 5. All right, so let me see here. I know that this x plus 4 and that x plus 4 are going to cancel. Furthermore, I see an x plus 3 here will cancel with one of those. I don't see anything else that will cancel. I can't cancel this x with that one because that's an x plus 3. That's not an x. And so my final answer, my numerator, ends up being 5x, x plus 4, x minus 4. And I really like the factored form of that. Uh, you can distribute in FOIL and all that if you want. But I like the factored form because it shows me that there is nothing left to simplify. In the unfactored form, it is harder to detect. Now, I do need to state my restrictions. I know that x cannot equal. Let me see. This gets tricky because I have to remember up here. Okay, but first of all, in the first denominator, I can definitely not have a negative 3. Here... I believe I cannot have a negative 3 or a negative 4. But then, when I copy time slip or turn it into a multiplication problem, this guy ends up downstairs. Well, there's a negative 4 already taken care of, a positive 5. i got to get all of the restrictions. Oops, I am off the page there. What happened? Oh, no! 
an airliner has a mind of its own sometimes. All right, that is your flip lesson for tonight. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Good night, everybody.